Greetings. My name is Ben, aka Downsize It, and uh, today I just want to give you guys a brief uh, recap and some cliff notes on the Ozark Mountain 2021, which was a big success. I was very happy with the way it went, and I was hoping to have this out after the actual stream was posted on YouTube, but YouTube is being a jerk right now. I'm apparently uploading an eight hour video it doesn't like, and uh, it's still processing. It had finished uploading to YouTube <clears throat> yesterday around 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., and still hasn't finished processing the video. So, it is up there, and so as soon as YouTube decides it wants to finish processing the video, I will have that posted so you guys can actually watch the stream of the top table and Social General Rob's commentary. But in the meantime, I wanted to put this out as a companion piece. Um, first off, I'm just going to go over some pictures, um, let you guys see uh, <clears throat> just kind of what we did and everything. And uh, uh, first off, we got the prize table. And if you notice, all these Star Wars helmets in these pictures and some of the uh, other accessories, those are all provided by my brother-in-law, Zach, to help with the ambiance. Uh, he is definitely a collector of all things Star Wars. And uh, also that Commander Cody helmet you see at the top there some of the pictures that's actually part of his full 501st outfit and uh, also uh, so as you guys can see you know Garrett Vance with all of his prize support the, that ruler set for the first prize is just was amazing how he was able to get the design and then doing the black pearl for the rulers was really awesome uh, that damage deck you that you see there is from uh, Alan Stelly and Mercury Fleet Command down in Houston he came up I had several players come up from out of town was really cool to see um, and then if you guys can see that chimera there that white with the black that was also my brother-in-law Zach he painted that up and um, had donated that donated that as a prize that prize went to whoever had the largest margin of victory in a single game the damage deck I did as anyone uh, for that want they needed to keep track through the tournament and it was any whoever had the most damage cards dealt on a single attack would win that and smallest margin of victory was the Liberty, which was anon anonymously donated to the channel a while back. Decided to use that as a prize support for this tournament. Um, a couple of pictures here. You can just see like our setup. You see me, uh, you know, going over the rules and everything in my Obi Wan Kenobi outfit. Rob and I, kind of like in our command center area, uh, where Rob was going to be doing his uh, commentary, and I had my wife's laptop to help me organize things. Um, our little play area. Uh, the the venue you could say and thank you to Buster and Carrie uh, they were able to secure that for us to be able to utilize that and then these next series of pictures are the 501st big shout out to the 501st the Diamond Garrison although I think they're about to um, have they're, they're an offshoot of the Diamond Garrison they're about to have their own garrison for Northwest Arkansas but I don't think it's official yet but basically the Northwest Arkansas guys the 501st um, came up. We had Darth Nihilus. We had a scout trooper. We had a tank driver. And then Zach was also there playing in an unofficial capacity as a bridge officer. You can see in the background there, Buster decided to show up as a uh, 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 Star Trek Voyager crew member. <laughs> and uh, he actually, I, I should have taken a picture. He actually set up a wall with a bunch of like phasers and tricorders and stuff. Um, I forgot to take a picture of that. And. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Darth Nihilus and the tank trooper decide to get in on the action and start commanding their forces. You know, um, I, I always like to see Old Republic characters, so I'm really happy we had a Darth Nihilus there. And then, then this, these last couple pictures, uh, we have a melding of Star Trek and Star Wars, but of course, you know, the uh, Star Wars uh, troopers have to arrest Star Trek because he is, you know, invading our sci-fi space for the moment. Although I sympathize with Buster. Uh, because, you know, Trek was my original nerd. But wanted to just show you those to you guys, uh, just give you some pictures and uh, kind of an idea of what went on. But uh, what I mainly want to do today, which I'm going to go over now, are the fleets. So I didn't go over the fleets in the, in the stream. There's just a lot going on, and when I put the stream together, I wanted to keep it, I don't want to say, like, yeah, it was as raw as possible. I didn't want to do too many cuts. I wanted to keep it like an actual stream. Um, but this is going to be like a companion piece to the actual stream when it finally finishes uploading. So, 
I'm going to go over the fleets of everyone that submitted a fleet. And to make it easier, I'm just going to use Ryan Kingston. Um, instead of trying to put like my normal pictures together for 10 different fleets, I would take them forever. I just entered them all into Ryan Kingston. We'll go over them there. Then I'm going to save these Ryan Kingston files and put them on a Google Drive that I'm going to share in a link in the description below. So you guys can pull up the fleets when you see the top table contestants. And you can use those to follow along so that you can know what fleets are facing each other in each matchup. So uh, the first one I'm going to go over is our lone rebel. And this was Allison Shane. And Allison is Aaron's wife, the Sir Chicken. And she basically, this was his list he brought to LSO. And so she decided to bring that list uh, to uh, uh, play in the tournament. And this, I think, was her first time playing with anybody else other than her husband. So really happy to have her uh, joining the Armada community. And <clears throat> so it's the double pickle. We have Akbar um, on the home one with reactive gunnery. This is the reactive gunnery setup that he did, electronic countermeasures. Um, leading shots. These are the assault cruisers, and then Defiance and another assault cruiser with Intel officer. Then Leia Organa and parts resupply and a medium transport with Shara Bay and two A-wing squadrons. And you can see down here the uh, missions, advanced gunnery contested outposts, and hyperspace migration. That's actually unique, actually unique one. That actually was played. Someone actually picked that from her list um, for I think it was the final match. They actually had, I don't think I've ever seen that one actually played. Um, ever. Actually, I don't think I've played it myself. Um, let's head over to the Imperials. We had lots of Imperials. They, they actually had the biggest showing. So, first we had, uh, Jason. Jason came up from Dallas. And he did an Admiral Mati list with an Onager and a Kuat, which was just absolutely brutal as far as just the amount of hit points you have to get through. Um, Wolf Ularin and Gunner Chief Arnillion and Veteran Gunners on the Onager. Kuat had Brunson, local fire control, reinforced blast doors, point defense ion cannons, basically just a tank, um, external racks, then the Gazanti with comms net. And then some of the your old classics for uh, fighter support, Jendon and Merrick Steele, Tel Travera for escort, and Morna Key, who, uh, you know, decimators are a beast. And the Morna Key, especially because you can just you get the rerolls and get your uh, defense token back. And he had Most Wanted, Contested Outposts, and Infested Fields for his missions. Then we had Trent. Trent is the one uh, famous, you could say, for the uh, Superstar Destroyer at L uh, LSO. And uh, he decided to bring uh, Valadian, Jesse Berger's uh, Sloaniger list. Um, the, the infamous list, you could say to see how it could perform for him in this setting. We all know it. Um, I think this is pretty close to the same that uh, Jesse ran at Warzone. But, you know, we got Sloan on the Lifo with Hondo and Corvus, the Quasar with Grint, Flight Controllers, Boosted Comms, and Squall. And then the Onager with Palpatine, Veteran Gunners, Ordnance, Engine Techs, and Cataclysm. And then the Standard Fair. I think he actually added a TIE Defender, took something out. But then the Double Fire Spray, I think, is the main thing to add the additional firepower, Sinter Tell combo, Merrick Jenin combo, and then superior positions, Rift Ambush, and Surprise Attack as the missions. And we had Dan. Dan came, this is Dan Hrobar, and uh, also Swim Fastful in the comments. He's one of the, who watches the channel, so really excited that he was able to come down from Wisconsin. I think uh, it might, he gets the prize, there might be a tie between him and Alan from Dallas, but coming down from Wisconsin to participate in the Osmo, and uh, he did a triple victory too, which I thought was really unique and cool. And I was like, uh, you know, because you guys know how much I hate the victory, but I was like, you know, I want to see how this will work, because this is a lot of firepower, a lot of hit points. They all have gunnery team. It's Thrawn, so I was really happy to see Thrawn represented, so that you get the double command for each victory, uh, spinal leading shots, disposal capacitors. So basically, you know, just set them up in a line and then like, come into that kill box if you dare. And then four TIE Fighters just to help out against maybe enemy squads to tie them up. And we had opening salvo, contested outpost, solar chrono for his missions. And then last we had Buster. Buster also brought Sloan, but his own little version of it. Um, Sloan was on a Psy Moon with Vanto, intensified firepower, and expanded hangar bay. 
We brought two gladiators. The first one with Palpatine and Insidious with your uh, Ordnance Engine Techs Assault Protons. The second gladiator with a Scope First Officer Fire Control Team and Assault Protons. And then a Gazanti with Comsnet. And then 10 TIE Fighter Squadrons. He wanted to bring as many TIE Fighters. I, I think that's all that he has. He just wanted a TIE Fighter Swarm to swarm the board. And he had Opening Salvo, Fleet Ambush, and Superior Positions for his missions. And then we had a pretty good showing of Republic. Three Republic fleets. So Alan um, brought a very similar list that he had at LVO, and I guess that he played through most of the tournaments down in Texas this year. Uh, this is Bail Organa. He was on a Consular Charger with Rave 7 Comsnet. Two Ben 1s that have the clone navs and the Spot T XI 7s. Uh, Mercy Mission for one, take evasive action for the other. Uh, I faced against this. Is a, this is a tough list to go up against. I faced against this. And it didn't help that I played it stupidly, but <laughs> even if I would have played it well, it's still a tough list to play against. Hondo on a console arm cruiser, which becomes the Mercy Mission. And then he swapped out another cons the third consular from what he did at LVO for a Pelta, this time with projection experts and parts resupply, so more of a support repair ship. And then a targeting beacons, abandoned mining facility, and volatile deposits for his missions. And we had Aaron. So Aaron decided to do, it was kind of like similar to the Triple Vic, he decided to do Triple Acclimator for his fleet. Um, also Bail Organa, who was on the Acclimator 1 as the carrier with new Voodoo B, flight controllers, all the accessories for a carrier. And then two Acclimator 2s as, you could say, the battleships, or the battle cruisers with Intel, Thermals, Swivel Mounts, Assault Protons, Ordnance Experts, just tons of long-range firepower, and bringing those black dice out long-range with the swivels. And his squads, he had Plo, Luminara, and four Y-Wings with targeting beacons, fighter ambush, and superior positions for his missions. Then the last Republic fleet was my brother-in-law, Zach, which uh, really, you know, glad he decided to show up and play. Uh, I think this is his third time ever playing uh, this year, or second time only playing this mat, this uh, list. And Zach decided for his first tournament uh, to play probably one of the most complicated lists you can envision. <laughs> but uh, he put this together himself. Uh, it's something he wants to try to, you know, refine and try to do better at. But he's got the Venator 2 as his command ship with Tarkin. Uh, clone Commander Wolf, Clone Gunners, Thermal Shield, Squad Battery Turrets, uh, Venator 1 as the battleship with the spot, Clone Captain Zat, Gunnery Teams, Intensify Firepower, Heavy Fire Zone, Resolute, Assault Protons, and then a transport with munitions and TB-73 and anti-cannons and V-19s for his squads. And then he chose a close-range intel scan, contested outpost, and solar corona for his mission. And then for Separatists, we had two. So we had Joe. I'm really glad that Joe decided to play, and uh, and I will just, uh, this is kind of like the little spoilers, but Joe, uh, I want to tell you, man, Joe, you did a great job, because he's a brand new player, just started playing Armada in February, and he had to face off against all the top players, because uh, he um, kept doing well. Uh, he won his first match, and then he only, he lost well his next two matches so he just kept getting he was in fifth place throughout the entire day and just kept getting matched up against the top guys you know whoever wasn't on top table he was usually on table two and uh, he held his own so uh, Joe you need to be proud of yourself that you hold your, held your own against all these veteran players that you were playing against but uh, he had a uh, this was a nasty list Grievous on a dreadnought uh, basically turned into a tank you know thermal shields boosty cons veteran gunners damage control so you can get rid of specialty crits and then three hard cell battle refits with TRCs and Intel officers. Um, a couple reserve hangar de decks to help out with the uh, droid tri fighters and vultures that he had for chaff. And then he had opening salvo, fleet ambush, and superior positions. Then we had another brand new player, Chris. Uh, you might hear Rob and I uh, refer to him as Guppy. That's kind of his nickname. Um, local player here. And this is his first time ever playing in person. He's only ever played a couple of times on TTS. And uh, this was his first time actually having models on the board. Um, so also, you know, really proud of Chris for coming up and just to try out his hand for first time Armada in person doing it at a tournament. So um, he brought a requisite support with Trench, tactical expert on all of his ships, fire control team, um, flat guns, XX9s, and Patriots fists, and then two munition comms with XX9s leading shots and flat guns, and then seven vulture droids as 
to uh, help swarm the board. He also picked close into close range intel scan, abandoned mining facility, and intel sweep for his um, missions. So that those are the fleets, and um, what I am planning on doing is I'm going to have these uploaded on a Google Drive, so you guys can. Uh, Download them at your leisure and look at them at your leisure while you're, especially while you're watching the stream, which I'm hoping will be done processing today. I'm at, I'm now at the mercy of YouTube, so it's been uploaded into the cloud. It's on YouTube servers. It's just whenever YouTube gets around to processing it, then I'll release it. So this will come out first because this will be a lot s smaller and easier to release. And uh, but I'll have the link to the Google, the shared Google Drive, so you guys can look at the lists and use them as a companion piece as you go along. And uh, Again, just want to give out a big thank you to all the players, to Garrett Vance for providing the price support, my brother-in-law Zach for the Chimera that he painted up, um, Buster and Carrie, and um, for providing the venue. And looking forward to seeing everybody next year at Osmo 2022. Um, it was a big success, um, and I think there is interest, and, and it could probably grow. And I'm guessing probably February is where I'm going to probably I'm going to hopefully have a place locked down. For a venue, and it's going to be about this time of year. Every year, I want to make it a yearly thing. Every November, in the first couple weeks, weekends of November, and uh, I'm going to try to find a venue that has Wi-Fi, so we can do actual live stream and that sort of thing. But all those details will come out once I actually have a venue. But don't hold your breath yet. It's probably not going to be until the November. You know, after I get back from Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Open, before I do that announcement. All right. So guys, uh, again, thank you for. Uh, everyone who played it was a lot of fun and i uh, hope you guys enjoy the stream and enjoy uh, watching the top table of the osmo 2021 so until next time <laughs>